Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to look at extracting minerals from the lithosphere for your A-level in environmental science. Now to go with this, there is a set of flashcards, we've got these in Quizlet, or they're in the course on the website, so they're next to the video where all the information is, and you can go through to test yourself on all the key terms in the video. Lesson 16. Extracting minerals from the lithosphere. We're going to start by looking at some key words that you need for your glossaries. Mineral deposit. This can be defined as any rock that contains at least one mineral. Or, this is also a rock containing a mineral, but at a purity high enough to be extracted commercially for a profit. Grade. A term used to describe the purity of an ore or the percentage of the rock that is metal. A higher grade means the rock contains a higher percentage of metal. Cut-off grade, sometimes written as COOG in exams. This is the percentage of metal the rock would need to contain in order to be economically viable to extract. For example, if we were extracting copper and copper was selling for millions, then you could still make millions with a low grade deposit. However, if the copper was selling for a lower amount of money, then we would need to only mine higher grade deposits to ensure no money is lost. There are also some terms we need to know that describe the quantity of materials in the lithosphere. They are stock, resource and reserve. The stock is all of the material that can be found in the lithosphere, including the minerals we will never be able to extract due to them being too deep or difficult to reach. The resource encompasses all of the material that could theoretically be exploited in the future with improved technology and increased pricing, even if it cannot be exploited currently. Finally, the reserve is the proportion of the minerals we can extract right now economically, using existing technology and the prices available. The relationship between these three terms can be represented in the following graph. On this graph, we can see the largest square represents the stock, so remember, that is all the minerals in the lithosphere. The reserve is the smallest square, as that is what we are currently able to extract with current technology and prices. The resource is slightly bigger than the reserve, because if prices go up and technology improves, then we will be able to access deposits that we don't currently extract from. For example, we might be able to mine deeper, or extract lower grade ores and still make a profit. On the axis of the graph, you can see that we have the level of technology on the X and the ore purity on the Y. Currently, the minerals we are extracting tend to be the highest purity and require the lowest level of technology. If the price increased or the technology advanced, then our reserve square would get bigger and our resource square would get smaller as a result. However, if the market price drops, then reserves could decrease again, as we may only be able to afford to extract the highest grade ores. Something else we can determine from the graph is that a lot of the stock is made up of the lowest purity deposits. As we continue to extract from the high purity deposits, they will become depleted, meaning we will soon rely on the lower grade ores. There is a theory called Lasky's Principle that states that as the purity of the mineral decreases, the quantity of the mineral on Earth increases exponentially. This means that although low-grade ores have a low purity, because there are so many of them that have not been extracted from, there is a huge amount of available ore to mine. So in the future, in order to ensure we can continue extracting mineral ores, we need to improve our methods of extracting low-grade ores as they will be the most abundant. In your exam, you may be shown this graph, and it will often have a logarithmic scale where the numbers do not go up in a linear fashion, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Instead, the numbers may say 1, 10, 100, 1000, and so on. You may be asked why a logarithmic scale has been used, and the answer will always be to represent a wide range of values. We will now begin to look at some of the different extraction techniques that can be used. The specification requires you to understand the processes of deep mining and open cast mining, as well as some examples of mineral types they may be used to extract. 
Questions may also require you to compare the environmental impacts of each technique. Starting with deep mining, which can also be referred to as underground mining. There are multiple different techniques that could be used, but they are all used to extract an ore body that is deep under the surface. This type of mineral extraction requires a high level of planning when creating the mine, as well as large health and safety regulations, as it sends workers underground. However, as the mineral extraction occurs underground, the habitat destruction on Earth's surface is fairly low. Surface mining. In contrast, surface mining or open cast mining occurs exclusively on the Earth's surface. This involves the creation of large, shallow pits to extract an ore body that is positioned laterally, close to the surface. As this is a surface mining technique, there is a much higher degree of habitat destruction in creating the open pit. It is worth pointing out, potentially for an application question in your exam, that if a mineral deposit is submerged in water on land or by the coasts, then dredging is used. It can also be used in shallow marine environments. The dredge will extract minerals from the sediment. When a deposit has been located and trial drills have been completed to determine purity, depth and chemical form, then the mining process can technically begin. However, decisions have to be made as to whether mining here would be economically viable, i.e. would it be possible to make a profit. For your exam, you are expected to know some of the factors that affect the viability of a mine site. There have been four, five and six mark questions on this in the past. Environmental impacts. The first factor to consider is the ore body itself. Firstly, the ore grade or purity must be high enough to ensure a profit. This will be determined by the cutoff grade, which is the minimum percentage of mineral that the rock would have to contain to be profitable to mine. It is dependent on the price and demand for the mineral being extracted, which fluctuate all the time. The higher the price that the mineral can be sold for, the less material will need to be mined. Furthermore, with a higher ore purity, there will be less waste material produced which would need to be separated and disposed of, incurring costs as well as causing pollution. Also, the chemical form of the mineral can incur additional costs as the mineral may need to be separated, for example, iron being extracted from iron oxide. The overburden is the name given to the rock situated above the mineral deposit that will need to be removed in order to extract the ore, as shown in this diagram. Overburden is usually removed via controlled explosions. The characteristics of the overburden can affect the viability of a mine. If the overburden is deep, then more explosives will be needed and there will be more waste material to remove and dispose of. Furthermore, the hardness of the overburden may make it more difficult to remove and require more explosives, increasing costs. If the overburden material is quite unstable, then whilst it is being removed, it will need supports put in place to prevent landslides and keep workers safe, again incurring costs. The hydrology of the mine site will also impact mine viability. The hydrology can be described as how water moves through the mine. If the mine is made of mostly impermeable rock, then drainage systems will need to be installed to ensure the mines do not flood, which would cost a lot of money to do. Another consideration when deciding if a mine is economically viable is whether there is suitable infrastructure nearby that can be used for transport of materials extracted. If there are no road or rail networks, then these would need to be built to ensure the material could get to customers, which would cost a lot of money. Finally, if there is a land use conflict on the site, then money will be needed to try and resolve this. If, for example, there was a protected species present, a permit may be required to mine there or the organism may need to be relocated prior to the extraction. If the area is a woodland, then money will need to be spent clear felling the trees and removing them. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.